title of my talk today is user friendly. <laughs> Sometimes I think that kid knows more how to use that computer than I do. Anybody? <laughs> yeah. So, so I got the music in me. So great. You do. Do you all know you have the music in you? Anybody think they don't? No, we do. We all got the music in us. The question is, <laughs> let it out. The question is, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? So this month, we've had five weeks. So the second week, I did the thing itself. The third week, I did the way it works. The fourth week, I did what it does. And then this week, what's the last one? How to use it. So today is all about how to use it. If I've got the music in me and I let it out, what am I going to do with it? Is it running me or am I running it? Does my life run me? Do the conditions of my life run me? Or do I run the conditions of my life? Is my life the way it is because the universe just turned it out that way? Or is my life the way it is because somewhere along the line, I have used the music in me to create this situation? Which, of course, is the correct answer. So here's Ernest Holmes' quote at the top of this, of this chapter. He says, one of the great difficulties in the new order of thought is that we are likely to indulge in too much, too much theory and too little practice. Anybody? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we all know science of mind, don't we? We all know. How many of you have taken at least one class? How many of you have taken at least 10 classes? Yeah. So we have studied this, and, and that's why I so admire you, Eric, because you are always trying to, you're always pushing the envelope and going out and seeing other ways to look at this, um, which is what I do as well. So we somehow think this stuff is easy to understand, but we think it's hard to live, and we believe that. We actually have created a system where we're like, yeah, I get this. I totally get this. And we understand it. But the real question is, what are you going to do with it? Are you actually going to live it? But the truth is, it's a lot easier than we think. Oh, I'm glad I have this thing. Look at that. You came out of the womb knowing what to do. When you came out of the womb, I always feel like I have a lazy R when I say that. When you come out of the womb, you cry for what you want. You let everybody know what you need, and you get it, right? That's as simple as it is. You know what you want, you put it out there, and you get it. That's how simple that is for that child. But for us, as we grow and as we move along in our lives, we know we've got all of this, but we have convinced ourselves. And in this chapter, Ernest Holmes really talks about that we've convinced ourselves that this is complicated. Of course, he did write a 700-page book to tell us how simple it was. <laughs> but nevertheless, we are convinced that this is so complicated. And then, God forbid, God forbid I, I, I teach Troward, Thomas Troward, because then everybody's like, what is he saying? And it's really simple. You all know the one thing Thomas Troward came here to say, right, Dr. Tiffany? Yeah. What was it? Our purpose in life is to enjoy. That's it. Our purpose, she would have killed me if she didn't know that answer. Our purpose in life is to enjoy it. That's all we're here to do. What if your only purpose in this life was to have a good time, to have fun? <laughs> what if that was your only purpose? Who would like that as their only purpose in life? Right? Woo hoo! Yes. My only purpose to have fun, but maybe I have fun with the work I do. Maybe I have fun in the relationship I'm in. Maybe I have fun all of the above. But maybe I've chosen work and relationships and things that don't make me happy. And I think for some reason, I'm stuck with that. This philosophy is very simple. What you think, you create. What you believe shows up in your life. It's that simple. It really is that simple. This morning on CPR, something came to me, a story about my, my life on Broadway. <laughs> what a surprise. And... <laughs> And so I am going to talk about West Side Story for a moment. Um, those of you who don't know, anybody not know this? <laughs> that I did, play, I did play riff on Broadway in, in West Side Story in 1980. Um, and 
all of a sudden, I was doing CPR this morning, and this story came across my head. It just hit me, and I, I shared it, which is this. When I got the job of Riff in West Side Story, I was a great dancer, and I was a great singer and a really wonderful actor. I was exactly right for the part, but I wasn't the dancer that everybody else was. I was just a great natural dancer who had studied ballet at, at the Joffrey. I did know ballet. I, I, my body worked that way. I did dance well, but I didn't dance Jerome Robbins well. And I didn't dance ballet the way these other boys, all the other jet boys and the sharks. The guy who played Bernardo was one of the stars of Alvin Ailey. So there I was. And so on the first day, the first day we hit the theater, because up to that point you're rehearsing and everybody's kind of trying to figure it out. But when we get to the performance and we're in you know, direct re dress rehearsals, I was standing in the wings ready to do this jeté across the stage. This jeté is where both legs are out and you're going across the stage. And I, I, that just wasn't my forte. And of course, I'm the last one out, which is when all the spots hit you and then there's riff. And these guys are like, turn and jeté. And I'm like, oh my God. I am an idiot. Why did I take, why did they hire me? So I went out and I did it and I, like my legs are like, you know, theirs are like this and mine are like this. And the whole time I'm just, and I'm getting yelled at by Jerome Robbins. He goes, hold it, stop, 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 do that again. What was that? And it was horrible. And I got so angry. I went out into the wings and they played the music and I went across that stage and my legs were straight out. I'm getting, I'm getting all emotional telling you this. My legs were straight out. And I just went across that stage. And Jerome Robbins came running up onto the stage and grabbed me. Because in those days, they were allowed to do that. <laughs> now he'd be sued. Um, he grabbed me and he went, I never, ever want to see you go below that bar ever again. And I had totally forgotten this until this morning on CPR. And I was like, that was a huge turning point in my life. If I can do that, why don't I do that? You know why? Because the boy standing over here was watching all the other boys and comparing himself to them. And so I instantly believed that I could not do what they were all doing until I did it out of anger. And then I was told, never go below who you know yourself to be. So here I am today getting to tell you, never go below who you know yourself to be. And that is the entire philosophy we stand by. That is what's going on here. That when you know who you are, when you remember who you are, every aspect of your life shifts. It changes. You can no longer accept lack. You can no longer accept failure. Other than if something seems like a failure, it's part of your story. It's part of where you're going. It's part of your growth. Because you know who you are. So there's a song in the show I did right before West Side Story. Today's the day of my, all my shows. <clears throat> right before I starred in West Side Story, I had a really good part in A Chorus Line, the very first production of A Chorus Line, by the way. The, I'm that old. So in A Chorus Line, and I got to do the song, um, I Can Do That. You all know that? I'm watching Cisco Pitter-Pat said, I can do that, I can do that. So... That song is such a science of mind song because here's the deal. We all walk around going, I can do that. I can do that. But do you do it? It's one thing to say, I can do that. It's another thing to actually do it. So I want you to think about your life today and just think about where are you saying, I can do that and I'm not doing that. Because what ends up happening is very much like you were talking about, Eric, I can do that is the truth. I'm not doing that because somewhere between I can do that and I'm doing that, there's a question. Something comes in and slows you down. So when Ernest Holmes writes this last chapter of how to use it, he says this, we shall be compelled to do more than announce a principle. When I'm up here on Sundays talking, I'm not up here announcing a principle. My job, my desire is to show you a principle. I've fallen down. I have had to get up on this stage after losing a daughter. I've had to get up on the, on the stage in NoHo with a stage four cancer verdict, in my, uh, whatever it's called, in my life. I stayed there because I want to show you what this teaching does. I want to show you. I, wanna, I don't just want to announce how it works. 
I want to show you that it works in my life. And that's what we should be here to do. Live our lives out loud, doing what is so simple, what that little child can do. Just knowing what is yours and taking it. And Ernest Holmes says, the taking is mental. He says this. He says, by conscious thinking, we give conscious direction to our lives. You are directing your life by the way you use your mind. Conscious thinking means you are paying attention to what you're thinking. And let's face it, there's a big, huge world out there that wants to tell us what's going on. But that's relative logic because spiritual logic would tell you something different, that you know who you are. So conscious thinking, we give conscious direction to our lives. Now maybe the conscious thinking was, I just wanted to like take Jerome Robbins and smack him. And so I thought the best way to show him up is to come over here and just go through it and I will not show you it anymore. <laughs> to do it, to just do it. I'm thinking, you know, like you and he's thinking, and now he's saying, yes, don't ever do it any worse than that. <laughs> Which is probably what he said. Don't do it any worse than that. But where in your life are you living below the bar? How high have you set your bar? Where is your bar? Good question. He says this. The realization we, that we have this ability must be gained by the application of our knowledge. So you may even realize, I remember who I am. I remember who I am. Well, if I really, really remember who I am, then how come this is happening? How come this is happening? How come this is happening? If I really remember who I am. Now, that's not to beat, me up, beat myself up for what I've created. It's for me to say, I did create this, but I know who I am, and I can create the opposite. I can create something better, because there is a bar that I will not dip below. There's a great line from Robert Bitzer, who was my teacher's teacher, and he said, never step off principle, even on special occasions. And we all have those special occasions, don't we? Where we step away from what we know to be the truth of who we are. So, he also says this. He says, in the, in the book, he talks about spiritual mind treatment. And he says, in, turn, in, in discussing how to use all of this knowledge, he talks about spiritual mind treatment. Now, we throw that term around a lot around here. And we all think, oh yeah, let's do a spiritual mind treatment. And I honestly think we haven't even begun to tap the surface of what spiritual mind treatment can do. Because all spiritual mind treatment is is a movement of energy from the consciousness of truth. Yesterday in this room, there was a Reiki workshop. Reiki is nothing more than spiritual mind treatment without the words. It is a movement of energy. And I spoke to a number of people that took that workshop yesterday. And Dr. Kirby and Scott Gibb, they moved energy in this room yesterday. They did, I believe, three meditations. Three meditations that were really spiritual mind treatments using what they know of Reiki. All of these modalities are intertwined. And people were moved. One person told me that they felt a physical shift in their body from this energy flowing around this room. This is not woo-woo stuff. You do it when you walk into a room and you feel the energy of a room. It's the same thing. You do it when you, you, you get sad about something and your entire energy shifts because you've listened to your voice inside. You've listened to your thoughts. You've reacted to something in the world. It's as simple as that. If you can get depressed because you react to something in the world, you can become successful because you react to the truth in your mind. It is that simple. And that's how to use it. Spiritual mind treatment is not something that you all have to go to school for six years to be able to do. The only reason someone goes through all of that training is to become a licensed practitioner to do it as a career. But at this center, you don't have to do that. You can take the entire spiritual mind treatment. Well, look at Scott Gibb. He went through six years, studied everything, and then said, I have no interest in being a, a, a licensed practitioner. But he got all the information and uses it. And he's a Reiki master at the same time. So when I look at this chapter and it says how to use it, 
It's not just the knowledge. You do have to have the knowledge, but you have to start learning how to use the knowledge. So Eric, Dr. Eric Overholzer, is about to teach a class. It's a brand new class. He's going to use the power of decision because that's the knowledge. But he's also going to use a book that's brand new. And his class is going to be extraordinarily experiential. That's where we need to go. We need to go to those places where we experience what's going on so that the experience shifts us and we get even more solid belief in what we're doing, how we have the capacity to use our minds. So, this is a long quote. Stay with me. This is what he says at the end of the chapter. A new light is coming into the world. We are on the borderland of a new experience The veil between spirit and matter is very thin. The invisible passes into visibility through our faith in it. A new science, a new religion, and a new philosophy are rapidly being developed. That's the precipice we're on right now. And the irony is, Jesus had this idea 2,000 years ago. They had the information. They had the information. It is done unto you as you believe. Use your mind. Greater things will you do than even I do the minute you use that thing called your mind. That's Jesus 2,000 years ago. And then it took 2,000 years for somebody like Phineas Quinby or Anton Mesmer or Ralph Waldo Emerson or you just name them, the transcendentalists. So finally say, you know, he said this 2,000 years ago. Why are we still saying this? And they turned it all around. Well, here we are at the precipice. And I want to say, I have surrounded myself with amazing minds here. Our new ministers are brilliant. The practitioners are right there with us, saying, yes, let's push this forward. We're on the same precipice. Ernest Holmes said this in 1927, but it's almost 100 years later. Why? Let's not wait 2,000 years to go back and say, well, he said that 2,000 years ago. No, 100 years ago, but see, Ernest was smart because Ernest said, in my words, but this is what he said. He said, if you're still studying what I wrote in 1927, 50 years from now, you missed the point. So we are still going to study and look at books like The Power of Decision, The Science of Mind, as a reference for the knowledge that was there and bubbling up. But today, in 2023, we're going to look to what has bubbled up since then. And really start to experience it, not just spew it out. Tiffany is not going to sit in a classroom and spew out information. No, she's going to want to live it. She's going to want you to live it. And warts and all, that's what we're here to do. Because the more we're willing to live this stuff, the better we're going to be able to benefit from it. So, at the end of the day... (laughs) That little baby is who we all need to be. We need to be willing to go back to our default settings. We need to be willing to go back to our innocence, back to that in us that is absolutely ready to say yes to understanding something else, something new, something more. Are you ready? Who's not ready? I can keep talking. It is time. It is so absolutely time, ready. This is the perfect time for us to get it. That chapter, how to use it, it is the perfect time for us to start understanding how to use it. You have the knowledge. Everyone in this room has the knowledge. Even Scott, who's here for the first time, has all the knowledge he needs. Just from what he heard today, he has all the knowledge to know how smart his mind is. Wendy, same thing. You have all the knowledge you need. Now you just have to go do it. Really do it. Really use that knowledge. Believe it. When I say, love only, forgive everything, and remember who you are, I'm saying, remember you are that. Remember you are this bright-eyed, interested, exciting, passionate. I could go on forever with these words. Divine soul, ready to just say yes. Yes, I am ready to use what I know. I'll keep learning, but I want to learn and use simultaneously. 
and just keep growing and growing and growing. Because guess what? The universe is user-friendly. It is a friendly, friendly world. Albert Einstein says, our biggest, biggest thing in our lives for us to know is whether we consider this world hostile or friendly. That's Albert Einstein. And if you consider this world hostile or damaged or dangerous, you are going to live that experience. But if you consider this world friendly and user-friendly, and that everything is mine to use, you are going to have a very different experience of life. So don't pay attention to all this mishmash out here, to race consciousness, to all the conditioned living people telling you how it goes. No, we know the truth. Right where I am, everything is possible. Period. End of sentence. It is time for us to really use this teaching. Not just know it, but to use it. So my gift to you is to ask you, go out there and use it. Turn yourself into that woman in that restaurant when Sally points to her and says, I'll have what she's having. You need to be that person. We need to look at you, Genevieve, and go, I want her life. You ready to be that person? You ready to? That's like half of you. Are you Paula, are you ready to be that person? You are. You already are. So that's all I got for you today. User-friendly. How to use it? Simple. Focus. Use your mind. Only allow in there what you want to create. Because guess what? It will create whatever you decide to put forward. Namaste.